Good morning and welcome to day two of my short adventure out here in the Strawberry Lake Wilderness, Strawberry Mountain Wilderness here in um, Eastern Oregon. Just having some oatmeal, getting ready to pack up camp and head on up to the falls where we can do a little bit of photography uh, with the falls. It's kind of a neat deal where it comes down just almost straight down. I would say it's a neighborhood of 60 feet. I didn't look it up or if I did I forgot. 60 to 70 feet but you're right in close so it's actually kind of difficult to get just the falls. Uh, especially the whole length of the falls. That's just almost impossible. Although on lighting like today where it's really really soft. If that cloud layer does not burn off, I might be able to get something with those falls. But you can get into the water as it cascades down just after the falls and it's kind of a cool deal. I really like uh, shooting the little intimate scenes there at the falls. So I'm just going to finish up breakfast, pack up camp, and we'll be out of here. Now that breakfast is done, it's time to just tear down camp, load up, and head on out. All right, camp is all set and ready to go. <laughs> As you can see here, it is just empty again, once again. Call me crazy, but there's something kind of cool. I don't know why I'm going to say this, but there's something kind of cool about the simplicity of life when you're backpacking because it all fits Oop, there it is. It all fits in that thing right there. And then you just load up and move on to the next site. So the next stop is going to be about a mile up the trail. I forget exactly how far it is. Between the three quarters and a mile. And that is the Strawberry Falls. And I use my GPS watch. So I've got the Garmin GPS watch. And I use that to track all my items, all my hikes and whatnot like this. It does look like the cloud layer is starting to burn off just a little bit. So last time I was here, I made it to the falls by, oh, I want to say about maybe 7.30 to 8 o'clock. Right now it's 6.41, so I'll probably make it there the same time as I made it last time. Uh, but with the slightly different light and a little bit of clouds, last time it was completely clear. And this time, at least I still have actual clouds. Uh, so that might help diffuse the light a bit and have a better experience or just a different experience shooting the waterfall. So it's time to load up the pack and head on out of here. This is the lake, and you can see we've got some hilltops there. And then just back on the trail for Strawberry Falls.
All right, I'm here at Strawberry Falls, ready to shoot. And I'm gonna start in the lower section down over there. And then I'll kind of work my way around and up towards the falls. Sometimes the tracking feature on this thing works and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to get it to track my hat. I don't think it wants to do that. Oh well, it's all good. See if I go this way and that way, it tracks me because it's tracking my face. But if I turn away, then it loses me. So I'll get down there and I'll reset the tracking once I'm down there. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put my water shoes on. I reckon I'll switch to them if I get my feet wet <clears throat> and I'll have my boots on my pack. Ah, scratch that. I'm gonna switch to my water shoes. I need to walk in too much water. Okay, now I've got my water shoes on. I can get my feet wet and I'm good to go. It is gonna be cold, but I'm good to go. All right, as I'm, oh, I'm just loving how the falls come together. I might wanna be on that rock there this will be a unique image for me. Most everything today will be unique for me because this is only the second time I've been here. But I just love how that's the different textures in the water that I'll be able to make. So I need to make my way up the falls onto that rock so I can get a slightly higher perspective. Maybe I should take a quick shot down here just so you can see what I see. Okay, I'm going to try about 400 ISO. Because I have the polarizer on there, I'm about 1 25th of a second. Let's make sure our stabilizer is on. And this is just a quick shot, just so you can see the perspective that I have from where I'm standing and what I'm looking at, saying I want to get more. I want to get a different perspective, so I'm going to climb up a little bit and get a slightly different perspective. I'm also looking down here to see if there's anything here I could do, but the way these logs are, it's just a little much. So I'm going to shimmy up there. You might hear me scream like a little girl once I get my feet in the water, though. Oh, cold. This is where bringing my water socks would have been a good idea. Certainly this can be very slippery where I'm walking. So you'll probably notice, if you do notice, I'm trying to put my foot at the bottom of the pit. Rather than stepping on top of a rock or on top of a log, I'm putting my foot at the bottom. We also have some logs that are coming across and they've been holding back some rocks. Those could give way if I put my weight on them, so I want to be real careful how I do that too. This is a much better perspective. I like what I'm seeing here. I think I'm going to go for just the, the base rocks here. If I can, I'm going to get the little bit of water coming down this way. But I got a big, huge log. If I get just a little bit of it, it's going to be kind of annoying. So I'm going to try and get it so I don't have that big, huge log. But I got the other log pointing up into the waterfall. That should be all right. I think it's going to work out well. Probably going to go vertical on this. There we go. I think that's pretty decent. I want it to be 
fairly high so I can get above this foreground log. And then I'm using the two second delay so that when it does make the exposure, I can have nothing touching this. This is a pretty rickety tripod when it's this extended and I can have nothing touching the exposure as it relates to any jiggies. And of course, there might be something down on the ground, but these are pretty substantial rocks. I think I'm pretty good there. I'm going to go ahead and shoot this, but I'm not completely crazy about it. Oh, let's, I want to take a look at my histogram first. Yeah, that's fine. Let's see, let's stop this down to about F8. And then about a fifth of a second should give me some good texture in the water. Yep, definitely gives good texture in the water. And the reason I'm not crazy about this is because on that left-hand side, the water is just truncated. But if I go too far to the left, I'm going to lose the, I'm going to lose the, um, the water coming up from above. So I'm going to talk you through as I'm framing this up. I've also got video going on my camera here. So I'm going to talk you through what I'm seeing here through the camera. And what my initial vision was, was to crop off that section of, of log in the bottom there. But as you can see, if I do that, I lose the waterfall completely, it seems. I don't know, it might be kind of an abstract feel. I'm going to go ahead and grab this shot. I'm still getting a little bit of that log in the bottom, but I'm going to go ahead and crop that off in post-production. Or zoom in a little more. Yeah, this is kind of interesting because what I've got going on here is it's a waterfall shot that's not of the waterfall and I kind of like that idea as I'm as I'm kind of absorbing the scene here it's, it's it has a certain drama to it and then it also focuses the the middle part is this little moss cavern in the rocks as it comes down vertically uh, I do have this big huge log coming off to the left not sure I care about that either. So I'm going to go with some other compositions here. Minimize that log to the left, which puts this other log in the bottom in the very, very, very corner. I'm going to take this on up to F11. I need a little more depth of field, but I'm going to keep it at a fifth of a second. I like the speed fifth of a second. So what that means I need to bump myself up to 800 ISO since I took a stop of light out in the aperture, I need to add that stop through my ISO. I'm going to widen it out just a hair. All right, there we go. Give a little more room on that item in the corner, the lower left corner. I'm right about 50 millimeters. I don't usually shoot at 50 millimeters, but I'm right at 50 millimeters here. And I like having a little more room there because otherwise it just feels too crowded in the corner. And I'm looking around the rest of the border. I've got a little smidge of a thing in the lower left. I'm going to try this horizontal now, and I'm going to zoom in even closer. I'm going to rotate that polarizer so we can really see. See, up there in the left-hand corner, if I didn't have the polarizer, you wouldn't see that water splashing so much. When I activate the polarizer, we get to see that water splashing, and that's just really cool. I'm going to zoom in a little more. Nothing but green, rock, and water. All right, this is one where I'm going to take it back down since I don't need all that depth of field. I'm going to take it down to f5.6, and then I'm going to take the aperture down to 200 from 800 for the equivalent exposure. Still at fifth of a second because I like that speed on the water. And I'm going to go ahead and double check that since I've zoomed in. Oh, yeah, that is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, very, very nice, very nice. Well, let's just embrace those objects in the foreground. Got some logs and whatnot. So we are just going to embrace them. Not too much, though. And I'm going to need my depth of field here again because I've got some foreground elements, some background elements. So I'll grab a shot like this at f5.6, and then we'll compare it. I'm going to double-check my polarizer. It was just a little bit off, just a tiny bit, not too bad. Then we'll compare it at f8 to get a little more depth of field when i'm shooting this waterfall when i'm going for my exposure when i hit the play button here i'm going to describe it a little bit 
right there in the where the water's crashing on the big rock, I have a little bit of a blinky going on, telling me that I've got I've lost my detail. So that's something I want to be a little bit concerned about because I want I don't want to lose any detail. So while the fifth of a second has been doing really good, I'm gonna go ahead and stop it down another third of a stop. I have the very infinitesimally tiniest amounts of blinkies, and that's what I'm looking for. That's that's where I know I've got a really decent exposure because there's so much more information in the raw, I can drag that back down in post-production and I can just make that look real good. Now, if I were to go even another third of a stop, and when I look at these in post-production, we'll talk about the starting points and what is, what's the value here? What's the, is it worth it to keep it slammed up against the right but not clipped off? Or should I bring it in a little bit? When we bring it in a little bit, there's a little thing I'm going to show you about enhancing contrast in the highlights. And it's easiest done when we bring that back a little bit. When we bring that brightest value, we bring it down in the histogram just a little bit, more towards the left just a little bit, and then we can man manipulate the, the tools there in Lightroom to increase contrast in the highlights. And then we're going to have a little bit more detail coming through in the highlights and that will probably just make it a little more interesting of an image. If we don't like it with that detail, then we can just back that off and it's no problem. This does make the rest of the image feel quite dark, but this is where we're going to get a kind of a moody sense. When it's nice and dark, those colors are going to be super rich. You got the polarizer going, that green is going to vibrate. There's going to be lots of great things coming through, I think, in this exposure where we brought it down just a little bit. I'm really loving the detail there. I've got some greenery coming in with some water just going right by it. Uh, I still need to try and get my wide angle, but while I have my telephoto mind going, I'm going to I'm going to continue shooting that. So I'm activating my video on the camera once again so you can see what I see. And I was looking at these things right here. And this is this is going to be the most that I can zoom in with this lens, which is too bad. I wanted to zoom in a little further, but I will be able to crop in. I could either use the in-camera cropping, so it shoots as if I were on the crop sensor, or I'll just crop in in post-production. This is definitely something I don't usually like to plan for. I like to get it as close in-camera as possible, but if I can't achieve my vision, then I'll just go ahead and, and crop in a little bit. But my vision is nice and tight, so I'm going to do my best to grab this shot and I'm going to try and leave that major interest portion in the center. That's the sharpest part of the lens. So I'm going to leave that major interest portion in the center. And I turned off the camera video. But yeah, I want to crop in a little bit on that scene. I think that's going to look really cool. All right. So I have changed my lens now. Uh, the 24105 is here in my shirt. And the 16 to 35 with the EF to RF adapter. First time I'm using this adapter. All right, I'm running the video in camera once again. And so you can see when I'm wide angle, I can really get it all. Let's see here. I don't think full 16 is what I want. About 18 to 20. What I'm really tempted to do is get a panel where I'm going to be able to grab a frame from over here to the right or to the left and get a frame to the right. It'll be more of a square framing at that point and it'll have a effectively really wide angle view. But that's I think what where the money shot is on this frame. I'll put it up here on screen so we can see if it's worth it if it if it works out. I think it will work out. I have found some really cool mosses and with my wide angle I think I can get this crashing water coming in on it. That could be pretty cool. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. Of course, I don't want to get my lens wet. But I do want to be low. This is the shot I'm looking at here. 
not too bad. My initial vision was a little closer, I think, but the problem is that that water from the splashy there is going to get my lens. I do not want to get my lens wet. Let's see what happens if I get a little bit closer here. Oh, that is nice. All the way back out at 16. There's a twig up there in the corner, and I think I'm going to get rid of this one right here as well. Those are annoying me. This is, the water is running a little bit faster right there, so I'm needing to slow it down to 0.3 seconds or so. Let's check that out. Yeah, that's much better. At, 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 well, no, wait a second here. It's, it feels like it's running a little slower. I misspoke because it's kind of coming to me. It's bigger pieces at a fifth of a second. I didn't really care for how it was looking. I wanted a little more stream, a little more streak to it. Let's go to 0.6 seconds. Take a look at that. Oh, I think I have water on my lens. I definitely have water on my lens. And this composition is not really working it for me anyway. Let's zoom in a little bit. There we go. That's much better. <clears throat> All right, now this is worth it to go get the cloth, which I should have brought when I got my other lens. Oh yeah, that's real nice. And if I take that down to two seconds, we can see what that's going to look like. Super smooth water. And then let's zoom it back out. Oh, let's go. Oh, no. Back out to the one fifth of a second that I've been shooting most of the time here. Well, I'm done for today shooting here at Strawberry Falls, and it's time to dry off my feet. All right, it is now time to head on up the trail. My first priority is going to be finding a place to camp for tonight. It's only nine o'clock in the morning right now, but it's gonna take me a little while to get on up there. I wanna be able to drop my stuff, and then hopefully the goal is to go ahead and summit Strawberry Mountain this evening. If the weather holds, if everything you know goes according to plan, I'll summit this evening and then I will come back in the dark after sunset, whatever the case is. I'll come back to camp uh, at that time. So then tomorrow night, Wednesday night, I'll probably come back down and I'm going to head out over to Little Strawberry Lake. That is a fantastic little place, kind of nestled off in the mountains the other direction. Just a gorgeous little lake. All right, so next time you see me, I'll hopefully be setting up camp. I've decided to change my plans a little bit. I'm about two miles from the summit, Strawberry Mountain Summit. And I stop here midway to, uh, from the falls on up to the summit to have a bit of lunch, looking for a camping spot and just trying to find something that would work. And uh, as I look at the map and the contours up above, I'm pretty sure I could find a spot to camp. My biggest problem is water. When you don't have water, you, <laughs> you you're in trouble. And up there, there's several springs that are on the map and they show uh, they show them you know falling down the hillside with this in mind with the idea of water and the lack thereof up above i have plenty of water to get there it's just once i'm there i can't do anything except come right back and i want to be able to spend the night there right so i'm going to go down to little strawberry lake 
and take it easy today, uh, relatively speaking. Uh, there's other places there, other things there for me to explore and to go around with the camera. And rather than risk it up there with no water, there again, there is Onion Creek. It's a different designation on the on the map. It's just, I've not been there. I'm not willing to take the risk. It's not that much of a risk. If I get there, the risk is I have to come back rather than stay. And that would tick me off and I don't want to get ticked off. So I'm going to go get myself another waterfall tomorrow. And I just love shooting waterfalls, so that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to head on back down. I'm going to go on over to Little Strawberry Lake, and I will set up camp there. And then I will go and take a look at what I can shoot. Now, Little Strawberry Lake, it has some things like what's back here behind me, the big sheer wall, and just all sorts of really cool stuff like that. Although I'm going to be really close to it. So I'll just spend some time exploring around there instead of hoofing it up the hill this way. All right, so the next time I see you, I should be at Little Strawberry Lake. Hey there, and welcome to Little Strawberry Lake. Right back here is my camp where I set up. I got in approximately four hours ago and promptly took a nap because I needed it. When I got up, I came out and photographed a little bit in these rocks. So I'll show you a few of these on screen here the details the texture and how the lichen was patterned on the rock that's the the thing that drew me to it i think it turned out pretty good I, was, I think i was pretty happy with it then walked out over this way over towards the west i'm at the northwest part of the lake or yeah northeast part of the lake sorry so i walked over to the west and I found this little bug. And thankfully he was agreeable to let me shoot some pictures. And I guess what I mean by that is he didn't move around too much. And so I shot a bunch of pictures. I had my, on both of these shots, I had the 18 millimeter extension tube. So here is Little Strawberry Lake. And way up there, uh, on that ridge there where those trees are going up. I hear, and I've been here before, I, I, I've been here on a day hike, and I'm hearing some falling water. And when I went over there before, a couple, three weeks ago, I didn't really hear anything um, that substantial anyway. And I don't know why I missed it. I was literally in that area. Uh, so it's either just something is bouncing off the rocks over this way. I don't know what it is. But I figure I'm going to go over and explore that way after supper. So we'll take the camera over there. We'll see what is out there after supper. It is 4.30 right now. I'm going to eat some supper. I like to try and space my meals about four hours roughly before I hit the hay. So the food can settle through and not be digesting actively as I'm trying to go to sleep. Last night, since I ate so late, I didn't sleep as well, and um, that's why I took the nap. Also, I woke up at 4.30, but that's why I took the nap. And so this afternoon, this evening, I'm gonna go ahead and eat a little earlier, and then head on out and get more pictures here at Little Strawberry Lake. <laughs> 